Hello everyone, thank you for joining today's talk. I'm Marko Yusup, an assistant professor at Tokyo Institute of Technology, and uh, I'll be talking a bit about why we should let the concept of trait be theoretical. This is a recent work just published in Functional Ecology, um, together with uh, several co-authors, among others, uh, Mike Kearney and Bas Koiman, both of whom you probably know very well by now. So let's uh, dive straight uh, into the today's uh, presentation, today's contents. So the use of traits is growing in ecology and biodiversity informatics, and there are many initiatives to collate and integrate data uh, into biodiversity databases. So with this um, need that has arisen uh, in recent times, so that there are in, in construction of databases like this, there are non-trivial challenges that arise uh, immediately when we are deciding so which traits we should prioritize and how to characterize them. Um, like some of the questions that we might ask, also should we be looking at individual scale uh, data and observations or population scale or whole communities or ecosystems? Um, how to standardize uh, data between databases? Um, just generally what uh, we should, what should we measure and put into uh, such databases? And so by the end of this talk, hopefully uh, we will have demonstrated that there are advantages of a theoretical perspective for defining functional traits using, in particular, dynamical systems models, systems models DSMs, of energy and uh, mass exchange. And these models are of interest because they uh, preserve the link between organisms uh, and their environments. So that is our goal. Uh, let's see how uh, we can do this, so how, how to proceed uh, with this background in mind. So functional, let's first define functional traits that they are kind of usually defined in ecology. So, so we are, uh, for functional traits are those that actually quantify an individual's performance in terms of survival, development, growth, and reproduction. Um, kind of working out, so from here, kind of working out what, what the role of theory is in, in this uh, whole thing. Um, so let's, let's just go through this scheme and then try to locate where theory comes in. So theory is, in, is a set of assumptions that aim, in, that aim at the most uh, parsimonious explanation of uh, observations. And models actually complement theory. So we have theory as a set of assumptions, and then we turn these assumptions into basically equations, so mathematical formulation, or possibly uh, algorithms. But in any case, so we are turning assumptions, theoretical assumptions, into mathematical equations, or possibly uh, algorithms. So, so these theoretical models, as opposed to empirical, like statistical or like you say, statistical models. So these theoretical models really bridge so qualitative, qualitative theoretical statements, essentially assumptions, possibly some uh, stylized facts, uh, into so they bridge these statements with quantitative experimental and or uh, fieldwork observations, essentially environmental data or uh, trade data. So basically, theory gives us a model which lives in this kind of greenish abstract world. Um, the model specifies uh, environmental state variables, these E state variables, and also individual state variables, these are I state variables, and also parameters. And then E state, so environmental variables and uh, parameters are something that we get from environmental data and trade data, so essentially from real world. And here we are making connection between these two kind of abstract and, uh, and real worlds. Um, finally, the model uh, predicts, so, so it's, it's a set, of, oftentimes just a set of differential equations, it predicts uh, a future I state, so the future state of the individual, and from there, again, we return to the real world, because from the state of the organism, we can figure out uh, growth, reproduction, um, and survival. So essentially, development as well. So essentially, uh, the same things that we are trying to do with uh, functional traits being those that actually tell us something about the organism's performance. So we see that uh, through theory, we can go from data, being be it environmental or trade data, uh, to, to performance, exactly the link that is required when um, formulating, when well, deciding what a functional trait is or isn't. Um, going a little bit more into technical details, our worldview here is thermodynamic. So that means that we draw a boundary around an entity and then follow the flows of energy and mass between this system, which is this bounded entity, and everything that is outside, which is called the environment. And because of this sort of uh, distinction, we use dynamical systems models, so DSMs of energy and mass exchange. 
um, the state of the organism as a thermodynamic system is completely described in, in terms of quantities, physical or chemical, uh, such as volume, energy, mass, pressure, temperature, entropy, information. Then these, these things are called uh, state variables. Then the dynamic systems models, or a DSM of an organism, basically involves equations for the computation of state variables as a function of environment, environmental variables, and model parameters. And then from that state that we compute and predict, we can infer uh, the, the organism's performance. And those DSMs that capture an organism's ontogeny give us actually a rather fundamental perspective on whether an organism can function. And that, again, means survive, develop, grow, and reproduce in a given environment, so given uh, different environmental time series or sequences of data that describe this environment. So to, to, to make this more concrete, this dynamic systems, uh, uh, dynamic systems models approach, uh, here we can actually, here we have the full thermodynamic scheme of energy and mass flows between an organism and its environment. So the, the full scheme means that there are three coupled dynamic systems models, uh, one for food mass uh, flow balance, uh, for water mass flow balance and uh, for heat flow balance. So taking just heat as, a, as an example, so organisms will absorb uh, solar and infrared radiation. They will also produce uh, metabolic heat, so heat through uh, decomposing large organic molecules into uh, smaller uh, metabolism. Uh, they also lose heat through infrared radiation, through convection, evaporation, conduction. And if there are any surpluses, or deficits that will result in the change of internal energy. So, so there will be a pressure for the organism the temperature to change, pressure um, being a figuratively speaking pressure, but essentially uh, temperature should either change, which happens in endotherms, or um, alternatively, uh, in endotherms, there will be some behavioral or uh, other adjustments to regulate the temperature and keep it constant. Uh, and then if we zoom, into one particular process, for example, cutaneous water loss, we can see that this process will typically uh, have some environmental dependence. So for example, in this case, skin air uh, vapor density gradient, which the larger the gradient, the more water is uh, needs to be lost in order to maintain such a gradient. Uh, there, there is mass transfer coefficient, which kind of is both a trait, but has some environmental dependence. So sometimes the, the line between and what, what uh, if whether a quantity is environmental variable or a trait is not entirely clear and we need to then look deeper into details but then there are clearer cuts the uh, traits like total area acting as a free water surface so basically that part of of skin area through which water is really lost so with this um with these details, we can actually go a step further and kind of redefine functional traits as properties of individual organisms that link to organism, organismal performance. So as we said before, survival, development, growth, and reproduction. But this time, we want them to be defined by uh, a DSM, by the dynamical systems model. We want them to, be, to play a role, visible role in the dynamical systems model. So with this definition, we actually can uh, distinguish between four types of functional traits parameter functional trait, which is basically just a model parameter, things that most of you are probably used to. Then there are threshold functional traits that are uh, sort of state variables affecting performance. They, they simply uh, show below, say below certain body temperature organism can function and above it, it cannot function. And then uh, if the temperature is crossed, uh, the organism either say, dies or uh, needs to alter its behavior. Then there are model functional traits. So those are, uh, those actually determine model structure. We'll see an example in a moment uh, what is meant by that. And then finally, estimation functional traits, which are not directly using the models, but are important to estimate model parameters. And that, again, is something that the, uh, most of you are by now uh, quite familiar with. So just uh, going through, uh, through an example here, we have a decision tree to determine whether something is uh, a functional trait or not in this our framework. And there are clearly uh, delineated like uh, for these four uh, possible subclasses of functional trait, traits, and uh, the example uh, in particular pertains to thermal tolerance. So we have uh, nine measurable aspects of an organism here, nine quantities or about well, nine characteristics that we can somehow measure, make a record of them. 
And this rare temperature, a lower critical layer temperature, which also something that maybe not clear, uh, it's not clear immediately, but will be clear when we work this example in more detail later. So solar absorptivity, metabolic rate, lethal temperature, body temperature, thermal, thermal regulatory mode, fur density, and fur color. And then we just ask our, ourselves a series of questions about each of these uh, observations. So is it uh, external to the organism or not? So air temperature and lower critical, again, it's air temperature. So they are obviously external. And as such, we can ask themselves, do they figure, are they terms in the dynamical systems model of our organisms? If yes, OK, this must be an environmental forcing variable. If not, we are simply having a uh, descriptive condition or descriptive resource. For those traits that, uh, are, that are not external to the organism, then we can ask a series of uh, further questions to classify them uh, appropriately. So for example, um, we ask them, uh, are they terms or rates that appear in a dynamical system uh, or model of an organism? If not, uh, then we ask ourselves, are they determinant of DSM structures? So for example, thermo thermoregulatory mode is, it, so we could be working either with an ectotherm or an endotherm. And obviously that will uh, affect the model structure. So we do have a functional trait of the model type and this function, this particular uh, functional trait actually decides the shape of the dynamical systems model. Um, the other two uh, quantities that we have here for the, well, characteristics is we have here for, for density and for color, we can ask them, are they used to estimate the model parameters? So for density can actually be used uh, in that sense. And then it's an estimation functional trait, whereas for color is not, it is just descriptive. It does tell us something about uh, uh, absorption of uh, radiation, but it's not quantitative and cannot be used in, used in the model. For that, we need the functional trait uh, that is mentioned above, the parameter functional trait, specifically solar absorptivity, uh, to get that, uh, that kind of information. Um, here is another work, uh, completely worked out example uh, relating to water balance. I would, due to time restrictions, I would just suggest if you are interested in this sort of topic, uh, just please go through it. Uh, I think it's very instructive and perhaps an example that is uh, nearest to, to uh, anyone who works with depth theory and who is familiar with depth theory. So, so an example relating, uh, relating to feeding. Um, so going given in, in giving a more detailed example, start looking at an actual endotherm, so a bear here. Um, we know that uh, endotherms, if and we, if we look at its at the heat balance of such, uh, such an endotherm, so there are air temperatures, a range of air temperatures uh, between lower critical air temperature and upper critical air temperature uh, in which input heat inputs so and heat metabolic heat production perfectly balances with heat outputs and the organism just feel comes, feels comfortable uh, and we say that the organism is in its uh, thermoneutral zone and everything is nice um, and fantastic. But if uh, air temperature becomes too high or too low, then for endotherms, metabolic rate will go up. In both cases, uh, the reason is that, well, the organism will try to keep its core temperature constant. So if it's too cold, it will start some activity, let's say shivering that will, uh, increase metabolic heat production and the, the, in that way keep the uh, core temperature uh, constant. Or um, if it's too hot, then the organism will actually start some activity that increases metabolic rate as well, but that mm, increase in metabolic rate is actually directed towards cooling, like say panting, for example. And that will uh, actually manage to release extra sort of heat surplus and maintain uh, temperature constant. The key for, for distinguishing what functional traits are or what uh, functional traits are, so which characteristics are functional traits and which characteristics are in functional traits, uh, what we need to, so we, we follow our scheme and then those observations that are external to the organism, but our model terms classifies environmental forcings. So wind speed, air temperature, uh, air vapor density, um, solar radiation and so on. Observations, that characterize the organism itself are functional uh, traits, but only if they um, uh, inform development, serve as uh, model constants, uh, or uh, represent possibly even time-dependent thresholds of model validity. 
and these are like fur characteristics, depth, length, diameter, density. So basically any quantity related to uh, the characteristics of fur, uh, skin surface area, uh, fat heat conduction, conductivity, flash heat conductivity, and so on and so on. But low and upper critical air temperatures are first external to the organism, so they cannot be traits according to our scheme, but they are also specific to a particular radiative environment, humidity wind speed. So they really depend on uh, con environmental conditions and as such cannot really be anything more than just a descriptive resource. So to conclude, um, energy and mass budget models of uh, organism provide us with a fundamental basis to make a link uh, between traits and performance. And for that, in that sense, we devised four types of traits, parameter threshold model and estimation. Um, so our focus on, on uh, dynamical systems models in order to define functional traits really, really emphasizes in the traits are an individual level concept. They, for, for most uh, intents and purposes. And this is simply because DSMs uh, model individual ontogeny, model an individual organism. Uh, also, they give us, uh, they, they restrict the key ingredients uh, that we need to model population dynamics, to model population growth, that we basically don't need to make any additional assumptions when jumping from individual scale to population scale. Uh, and finally, to build robust functional trade databases, we need this theoretical link uh, to performance via uh, dynamical systems models. And if we uh, keep in mind this link, and if we follow uh, the scheme that this sort of uh, uh, perspective gives us, then uh, we can build yeah we can build robust uh, financial functional uh, trade databases which will accelerate progress across uh, we think a number of ecological fields but thank you very much for your attention i hope uh, this was interesting and i hope that i can uh, answer your uh, questions <laughs>